Hello, everybody. Welcome to a Wednesday Live. This is a, they're all very special. I think I've said about every Wednesday Live, a very <laughs> special Wednesday Live. They are. Um, it's about the DoD 250, a continuation of Friday's episode, if you saw that. We look down at the pedal board cam here. You can see a bunch of craziness. This is a what some people would call a plethora of varying things. And there is some association, at least in my head, with the 250. Um, yeah, let's jump back to that real quick. The The thing that I want to cover today, first off, is just to acknowledge there's some cool old DoD stuff I like on here, especially the FX65 and the FX35. These are two-screw models. You know, this is after they decided three screws is too hard. Um, so these are fun transitional logos for anyone who cares. And then the, the, the DFX9... I don't love it. I kind of hate it, but I wanted to put it on the board. You know, nice. allowed to do that. It's a weird, strange pedal. Uh, the rubber neck is back on here. This is a Tom Cram era, beautiful delay pedal that we're a big fan of here on the show. And then around that, you see a lot of other pedals. Everything we're looking at, except for these three, this is a little bit of a side rant. I'll go on here maybe. But Everything else is DoD 250 inspired um, or connected in the same sense to the Distortion Plus in a way that is more 250. That's a little confusing, but they're all, all these things are here for a reason. So we're going to look at this. I'm also going to give away three really cool pedals today. Um, I'm going to give away an FX52 Fuzz. I'm going to play it, obviously, today. It's here on the board, but I'm going to give this away. Also in the cool category is just the FX10. This is not really related. Um, this is a favorite. This is my first DoD pedal I ever had, and one of my favorite. I had the 250 first, like everyone, but this was like I remember buying this and wigging out over it. Uh, so we'll give that away. We also have a second one of the Ken issue uh, Love Drivers. We're gonna give that away. I don't know how I'm giving them away either. <laughs> we had this discussion. We're just gonna do it. And then I found this. This has been floating around this godforsaken room for like 10 years, uh, just in JHS in general. This is a strange little piece of JHS history. I swear on the graves of my fathers, if I see this on reverb for some exorbitant <laughs> price, I will shut the entire show down. Uh, this is a really cool true bypassed uh, 250 that was modified, 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 <laughs> modified, modified. Words are hard. <laughs> Uh, to the zoom box spec. So if you know anything about the zoom box, I covered this in an episode called, what was it called? Gaia tones, pedals, something. My favorite guy. Gaia tone yeah. pedal, whatever. Zoom box is the series. This is a same lineage and you can mod a 250 to this. You can mod a 250 to a distortion plus, etc. But yeah, this will be a fun kind of crazy giveaway. It's like a rare yeah. collector's item that's sitting and rotting in the cabinet. So we're going to give that away. We also have a special guest on Tom Cram, which we'll plug him in later about his uh, his wonderful yellow spiral. But usual cast of characters. How are you doing, Edison? I'm good. Doing well? I have yeah. some tea today. It's uh, <clears throat> lemon ginger tea for those that are interested. No one's interested. That's but great. It's fine. I, it's what's new in my world. <laughs> I have nothing. I think people are interested. That was me. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> forgiven you're tired i am i'm real tired we're I'm, all tired i'm like tired tired and nick how you doing i'm good i'm working on a um, pineapple spin drip. is that interesting josh is no, this interesting nothing, <laughs> no drink is interesting uh sure? yeah and josh was not with us but we have a replacement larissa how are you today good i'm here i'm so glad you're on here yes the live will ultimately be way better because josh was not on it <laughs> oh man I only said that because he's watching. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he didn't feel good today, so I have this thing where if someone's really, really sick, they don't have to work. Yeah, that's good. So. Or alternate theory, <laughs> Nick and Joshua got upset at each other again. Yeah, or oh, yeah. we don't really theory. know. Who knows? So first order of business, there's going to be a lot of jams. We're going to take our time to it, but I do want to cover the two new releases. So when we look at this one, if we do top down here, this, for clarification to many people who aren't up to date on the happenings and actions of the internet, 
This sold out really quick. There were only 250 of these. Addison built these with his wife in the basement. We sure did. Which mm-hmm. is fitting because the originals were built in Salt Dang. Lake City. Dang, that's cool. I like in that. In a garage slash basement. That's The exact location is still confusing. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool project. It was for the... I'd say for the love of the game, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. So they sold out. People get mad. I don't know. People get mad at everything. I can't do anything about that. But this is really special. I want to clarify, uh, this is exactly like, and I said this, I'm saying it again. This is exactly like the 75 unit. You basically crank it all the way, and that's the sound it's good at. The tot paper, the tot papers, the tot, the pot tape. Pot tapers. You got this. You are tired. The pot tapers are weird. Yeah. So it's a, it's strange in the sense that it's, you know, there's this thing about, did they see the Distortion Plus or not? Yeah, they saw it. He said they did. But it's different. Uh, I had some people saying, is this basically a Distortion Plus? Well, no, because those usually have a 10K in series of the non-inverting op-amp, and you also see things like a compensation cap in the feedback loop of the 741 op-amp, et cetera, et cetera. So this is like, (laughs) it's a thing. It's a thing that's different. I love that, like, it's like, (laughs) as punishment for just not listening, you have to get this, like, nerd jargon thrown at you. It's like, no, it's the pot taper in the 10K blue blop in the effects loop of the ding dong and whatever like there's just (laughs) it's like you know did you want to know here you here now you know yes and (laughs) yeah so that pedal this pedal is very cool um and yes i know people are going to try to flip them if I th- worry about that stuff, we'll never do anything. So I'm about to look right now, and if yours and is on reverb, just don't buy one. Okay. If you're wanting, here's the truth: if you're wanting one of these pedals to play, you don't want this one anyway. Like that's I'm just true. being straight honest with you. So that's why we put this out. If we look down, this is the other unit. So this is up for grabs. We, it, all the dealers have them. It's really great. It's way more affordable. We added a ton of headroom, which honestly just makes it so much better. I hate turning a pedal all the way up because it feels like you're playing a broken pedal. You don't want want it to feel like a fight. Yeah, I don't want to fight this pedal. So this is great. And then you get the two modes and the two modes. The number 75 unit has a really bizarre, the original, this guy right here. It has a bizarre germanium diode that David pulled out of these IBM computer cards it measures the same as a DE9, which is ironically kind of what people used in clons for a while. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah. And then when you flip this up, you have just silicon, which, clarification, because the episode was already a freaking hour long. I, can't, I couldn't go into all this. The silicon up is not the typical 250 silicon up. It's a 1 in 4001. If you know anything about pedals, that's very strange. Like, it's more of a... It's not your typical 250 diode. It's a little chunkier in the in the sonic equivalent. So yeah, that's my. And you said there's more going on than just a diode change in that. Is that right? Or yeah, there yeah. yeah. There's a diode change. You have the gain of the op amp is structured differently. There are yes, yes. Just a lot of comments <laughs> about people not understanding that. Um, and so in in a way. This can be seen as, you know, it's our take on it, but it's pulled from the 75 unit. Nice, nice. And I just want to move on from that forever. Yeah. I never want to talk about it again. I think you summed it up perfectly in the episode. You said, I think the quote was, life is hard, DOD is is harder. harder. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So with that said, let's give away this. Already jumping in. Yeah, why not? amazing. Let's give this away. Heck this yeah. is the modded, I don't know when I did this. I'm not going to open it to see. It's a 90s reissue that was modded to these specs. And the first person in the comments that names the two founders of DOD nice. gets it. Nice, nice, That's a good question. Yeah. That's a good question. Sweet. You hold on to that. I'll We're good. While that's going on, let's, uh, let's bring in our special guest here on, it feels like a talk show. This is Tom Cram, all the way from Salt Lake City. Woo. How you doing, man? Doing great. Yeah, we're let's talk about this yellow. If uh, we look down at pedal board cam here for the live viewing audience, this was shown 
and rightfully so. I loved. I like just saying this is a version of the 250 because you came out of the DoD Digitech thing. It's so cool to say this is what you should go buy. So I just wanted to have you on and tell us about. It's weird. Like I'm aware of. There's even some weird tech in this, and I'd love to just yeah. hear you talk about the. Just go for it. The floor is yours. Okay. Um. So the one. The one you have is a special edition silver burst um, okay. with uh, custom knobs done by my wife. Um, That's so cool. The stock version looks like this. Yep. So it has a uh, kind of a hammered bronze powder coat. Um, but the the difference, well, there's a lot of differences. Um, but uh, the the, the high tech part that you're talking about is the, the Nanalog N2 is what I started with. Um, that's the one that's in yours. Um, I've switched since then to uh, using what I call the ADN. Um, yeah. That stands for asymmetrical diode network, um, which kind of takes the place of the uh, of the uh, analog N2. And uh, so that's that's one of the toggle selections uh, for clipping on the yellow spiral. And uh, the the biggest deviation is that uh, on the yellow spiral, I use what I call the girth control, and it's a rotary cap network that replaces the input cap. Um, to make it so it can allow more or less bass into the circuit. Because uh, um, one of the complaints that people have about 250s, especially bass players, is as you turn up the gain, it, uh, by design, by the way, it, it cuts bass. Um, that was meant to help it interface better with, uh, you know, hot amps. Um, you yeah. don't want to have too much bass buildup. It starts to get too uh, woofy and you get some heterodyning and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I made it so you can you can adjust that in and out. Um now, you know, one of the other things that it accomplishes is there's a one of the very first things that a lot of pedal modders try to do, myself included, is they'll take the 250 circuit and say, let's add a tone knob. Right. And um, I, I know you've done this same thing, too. Oh, yeah. And what ends up happening is it screws up the circuit. It sounds like something completely different, which has kind of led to, you know, like the uh, you mentioned earlier, like the OCD yeah. and stuff where they do a tone knob, they do a makeup stage to help yeah. compensate for those the changes that it makes. And and what that does is it turns it into something else again, um, yeah. which is still cool. It's just now a different thing. Yeah, like in a lot of ways, when we look at a rat, we Scott Barnum is a difficult guy to understand. Like I can't quite get to it, but I know they were modding 250s and distortion pluses. And you look at a rat and it is the family and you see this passive tone control and then you see an output gain stage and that's what you see in the ocd you see people trying to figure out like let's put a tone control on it the tone control just ruined it what do i do and then you like have to make it up or something and i love that exactly about your right. model your model kind of avoids that completely by changing out the input cap which is also fun because that changes how it distorts as well mm. i really yeah. like that it's 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 pre-clipping diodes um, so that uh, the base content changes how the clipping diodes clip, and, and one of the weird side effects from it, you know, which I didn't didn't realize until I built it, is when you do that, it, it's there's there's masking going on too. So yeah. the, the more base that hits, it causes the the diode to clip in a certain way, which masks certain frequencies. So theoretically, on the max girth setting, um, it's well beyond what uh, base. Uh, it's, it's allowing more uh, bass into the circuit than uh, should be audible. Um, I'm not sure. There's probably a better way to phrase that. But anyway. Um, no, it makes sense. It's, it shouldn't make a difference. But for yeah. some reason, because of that weird masking and how it changes the diodes and how they clip, you can totally hear a difference when you're at, at, at max bass. It's, it's really cool, actually. Yeah, it's like I think most pedals, you can correct me, most pedals, I think what you're saying is most guitar overdrive pedals – they do have a bit of a high pass nature where they're rolling off the extremities of a guitar that we don't ever really want to hear. Like you don't want to hear the flapping of the E string. Like you don't. So there's a thing where a lot of great sounding drives, you, you polish the ends. You It's almost mastering the frequency just a little. And so what you're, and what happens is in, in this, you're letting all of it through, even if it's not audible, there are these like strange there's something happening, but it's like felt, felt, and maybe not even heard. And maybe that, and I don't know. Now I'm just yakking, and mm -hmm. this is like philosophy. Maybe there's something to like, even how a diode, the forward voltage drops and the curve in the knee of the diode. I don't know. I feel like Bill Nye. Uh, I, I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm an empiricist. So, you know, yeah. I, I believe if you can hear it and experience it, it can be measured. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, 
but 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 I also leave room in there to uh, to to realize that there's some stuff that that you can hear and experience that we don't have the the tools to measure. If that no, if I that absolutely may. agree. Yeah, I'm always so, ranting. You know, I don't want to get into the voodoo thing, you know. <laughs> right, right. The mojo or the voodoo. Yeah, I'm the yeah, one who's there, always there's some mojo. <laughs> I'm always ranting like you're crazy. I put it on the spectrum thing. You can see it and whatever. And I am well aware. I, when I'm into when when that version of Josh appears, it's just straight like, can we stop arguing about these very proven <laughs> things? There yeah. is there is some felt like there's things with tube amps. We I do not understand why it's good, and it is what it is. And there's things with fuzz, like a fuzz face and germanium. It doesn't make any sense, but there's a thing. So I, that's really cool. And I think that that take on this pedal. Also, these knobs. So tell the process. Oh, in the special edition, how many of these were made? And then uh, the um, knobs I, I are think, like beautiful. I think they made 20 of those. 20, um, okay. So my, you know, I I, I, uh, I ex exclaimed to my wife, you know, a few years ago, I'm like, you know, the, the knob selection is so limited. And there's, you know, these cool old retro knobs. I love to see in new materials. And she took it as a challenge and, and, and started learning how to make knobs on her own. Um, so she, you know, she makes the molds and she, so cool. you know, she buys up, you know, old retro knobs to, to use as masters. And so, you know, some of the very first uh, pedals that we did with custom knobs were some of these limited editions. So it's, it's, yeah. it goes beyond, you know, just the circuit. There's, there's you know, the, yeah. the tactile thing. There's some cool nods back to, to retro stuff. There's, yeah, yeah, you know, there's just, just they're beautiful. Trying all kinds of stuff. Um, Thank you. Yeah, your line of pedals is great. I, my, my biggest hope is that people go check out. Uh, your whole line is just so cool. I'm excited to do a, an episode on that. But, yeah, this is good. I mean, I think we jam on it. Anything else you want to say on this? Or I just um, want you to ha a, have you on it, and it, talk about it. Think of it as a, a more refined, you know, a more refined 250 with a lot more control. Instead, yeah. of, instead of taking off the high end. You're, you know, controlling the the, the lows, and yeah. uh, it's that may seem like a weird thing for people to, you know, to want, but once you start playing it, you kind of get it. Yeah, yeah. it okay. seems it seems like a more holistic approach. To, holistic. Yeah, like I'm just gonna throw that word out there today, like because when we played all these 250s back to back, the main difference was low end for for a lot of them almost and always because there's yeah. you, and you even mentioned in the episode that input cap being different yeah people are obsessing over the chip but it's like they're not realizing yeah, the input what's caps are it. different so on it's, so many it's cool to have something that maybe could even capture you know the spectrum of 250 that you could get because if you get a gray box from 80 or yellow from the same it could be completely different or you know what i mean yeah 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 it's really that's, that's a good point to bring up too because the the, the gold the gold dod uh update yep. that i did um i had people complain that there was uh more bass in it than the, the original <laughs> and i'm like well it, it's it's based on the one i have so yeah, right uh it, what it is the original? Your input cap's a different value, dude. Yeah, that's D the D life is hard. DOD is yeah. harder. I've never seen anything like this 250 with <laughs> the backstory. And you have you and I've actually talked for years. You've been knowing I'm struggling through this, and like I'll just like text you out of the blue, like some manic question, like <laughs> because there's just like the entire internet history from Harmony Central Guitar Forums on is people trying to say the 250 is this. Yeah. And it just falls apart. Yeah. Any other brand, like Rat, they made those identical. Right. Every yeah. Rat is shockingly yeah. perfect. The, the DOD was like, what are, you, what are we making the today, man? ultimate like, troll of the of the tone chaser. You know what I mean? It's like, every, it's it's create. there's like this mythos that's created about it. Yeah. And then it's like, oh, actually... There's that. It's like you're chasing one Bigfoot, but actually there's like six different Bigfoots. Oh, it's insane. And the weird thing to me is, is you know, it's it's actually the same story with Big Muffs and with Flood Faces. Oh, you know, the, yes. the, those those part values are all over the place. Absolutely. And for some reason, guitarists are like, yeah, well, that's okay because that's Big Muffs and Fuzz Faces. It's like, well, yeah. you know, how about giving us the same benefit of yeah. the doubt? <laughs> that's no, a, that's a really true. interesting perspective, and I wonder if that comes from the what the dod 250 is and like because i feel like when you think of fuzz face and big muff you are automatically think of something more wild and Urbanic, bombastic yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so you're like oh of course they're gonna be crazy but the dod 250 feels like this trusty reliable <laughs> it's the overdrive. working it's like yeah, a chevrolet exactly and you're like i want my stepside silverado with <laughs> right. that engine in it and it's exactly not that at all <laughs>
truck yeah, analogies. That's, that's, that comes from that era, though. I mean, the, the, as much as the, the the OGs don't like being reminded they started in a garage, you started in a garage. <laughs> right. They did, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a funny point that uh, was not in, in the episode is you had a conversation back in the day with John, I believe, and he didn't want to say they had started oh, he, in the oh, garage. Yeah. He was like so ashamed he got mad. of it. He got mad. Yeah. So yeah, dirt for the uh, the text for the the marketing of the the update, um, not the update. So the resurrection of, of DoD. Yeah. Um, I I mentioned uh, well Scott Clempton. I mentioned that uh, you know DoD started in the garage, and John Johnson got pissed because <laughs> um, it, it, it I, I it's it, maybe it's a generational thing. I don't know. Yeah. But it, it struck him as being unprofessional. And you're yeah, like, and that's I, so cool. I know, like it's totally yeah. cool, man. What's the problem? There's like, yeah. there's like nothing more rock and roll than yeah. starting your band in a garage. It's like, yeah, it's they the started legacy. this company on a five hundred dollar Bank of America credit card in a garage, right? And he sold them out of a car. It's amazing. That is so punk. Yeah, that's, that's like a movie script or something. It oh, is. Yeah. yeah, it's like Brad Pitt is David. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that movie. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks for being on. We're going to go right into the jam of this. We'll give that pedal right away. On, man. Just thanks for awesome having, me. having you. All right. So let's let's jump right into this yellow spiral here. Uh, let's see. Just going to take my time and find the sound. Yeah, gotta find Do it. it. I, l- I like... In the demo we did, high gain, and I really love the high gain on this. So I'm going to do it again. I'm going to go to the the max girth. So I just have some spring reverb. I will demo real quick so I don't have to go back to it. That's my 65, FX 65. That's very cranberries. It's beautiful. Yeah, and then we have the octo. This is simply an octoplus. They couldn't print the plus on it for another country. I don't know the whole story, but that's the story. And then, yeah, that's it. This is, I'll probably do some slap stuff with this. Yeah, let's jam. We good? I have no idea what I'm playing, and neither do y'all, and that's the beauty of the yep. live show. It's a train wreck. Sounds so good. I slammed it with the FX10, and the rubberneck was on. The rubberneck is so cool. Yeah. It's amazing. The sound of the rubberneck. That's Tom as well. Have it real modulated. It's nice. Yeah, so this was... I ended up here. And then when you slam this on... This is just a really great pedal that people should care about it's actually in the updates um there's a version but it's it's a simple boost with a tone control like it's just very useful you know it's like super useful so if i'm hitting this pedal oh boy 
That's that's called that's called breaking the pot. Ooh. But I can darken that. It's just very usable. Um, yeah, that's nice. Let's give this pedal away. Nice. Who we got, Larissa? Who? Yeah, who we've, won? We've got a winner. Okay. Um, it is a Dars D. Okay. Email us. Email us your shipping address at the JHS Show at jhspedals.com. And, and if, if you're not yes. that person, don't, don't do email it. us. Because <laughs> we'll know. All right. I guess jumping on down the line here, what do you guys want to do next? Any, anybody, any opinions here? Looking down at the board? There's so many goodies. I want to hear, what's that, the one with the blue icon in the middle with the five knobs? That's this, what I was going to say. This is the Black Art, Black Arts Tone Black Works Art. is nice. the company. The Quantum Mystic. Ooh. Yeah. So what you have here is a volume, bass, mid, treble game. So he inserted, nice. um, I believe it's an active tone stack inside of this. So yeah, let's do that. Let's give me a little more bypass. You know how I was saying earlier I was too loud? Ooh. Did we lose you again? We did. Really? Oh, it's the, that. I think this bifet's broken. There it is. We have a broken pedal and we're going to roll. Heck That's yeah. DOD. That's right. Life's hard. DOD's yeah. harder. <laughs> All right. So this this is interesting. Let's go EQ off. Treble it up. It, it adds some active shaping ability. So again, this is uh, attempt is the wrong word because it's a wonderful pedal. It's how do you add some control to the 250? Yeah. This is a very cool way to do it. Did yeah. you say active tone stack? Yeah. Is that a phrase you use? Yeah. What uh, does that mean? Active means, so when most people put a tone control on a 250, okay. they take a potentiometer, one resistor, and one capacitor, okay. and that potentiometer rolls a resistor and a mm -hmm. cap create a high pass or a low okay. pass, however you gotcha. wire it. And they're literally just rolling off the high end. Sure. And that sure. ends up making the pedal like nasty, quiet, oh, causes okay. issues. Okay. So with this, um, this is active, meaning there's no loss. It's an actual cir circuit. There's an amplifier, a chip probably, okay. an op amp, powering that. Okay, okay. So there's no loss. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. You could think of the passive thing as very like caveman. It can't. Yeah, the yeah. big muff is that. That's fine. It's passive. It just depends on the circuit. Right. So you right. try to slap, and people do this, try to slap a big muff tone control on a 250, and it's like. Yeah. It doesn't work. It's like washing a hog or something. I don't know. I don't know what the saying is. I think that was the perfect analogy. Yes. <laughs> All right. This is where I go with all 250 pedals. It's the, the same sound. spot. Yeah, right. <laughs> but th I think that's interesting, though, because it, you know, we've talked about the 250. There's an hour long video about it. And it, it's like at the end of the day, like, I think depending on who you are, you're going to be kind of looking for your thing, thing within it. And it's like everybody has yeah. kind of a target that they're looking for. For sure. Yeah. You know? That's why the. The opinions are funny. Like, <laughs> right, opinions right. are just opinions. They're yeah, super totally. funny. Like, I don't know. Yeah. You might hate this pedal. You're like with me. I'm gonna find these similar sounds in the pedals. I'm just, I'm just admitting it at this point <laughs> right, in my life. Right. Yeah. Should we give a pedal away and then decide the winner while we jam on this one? Let's do it. I let's give away. Idea. Let's get this love driver out of the way here. So sweet. Um, we should do more DoD trivia questions. That's a that was a yeah. good place really? to Let's see. From. Who were the first people to buy DOD? Oh, the first like company. Who was the first group of people, company, whatever you want to call them, to buy DOD? <laughs> people th are like opening up new tabs to go <laughs> back. This is to not easy to find. I like, think I know this. Yeah. So whoever whoever answers that gets this Japanese issue reissue uh, that it's Barkle Pink. That's color? a good color. May, is it would would this qualify as burgundy mist? 
Hey, I don't know. Hey, Sam, if you're watching, is this Burgundy Mist? Sam's my yeah. friend. He loves Burgundy Mist. And for for those of us that may not know the answer, would you just you put it in the phone there for uh, for Larissa? You gotta type it for us, just in case. Just in, just case, in case we like in case somebody we're else wrong. might not exactly. Know. Not me. I like, know. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Because we like edited the thing, and it's like <laughs> Addison edited the whole thing, so he would know. I'm literally just texting um, so that the right answer is. <laughs> I'm also bad with names. <laughs> oh, okay. This could be a wild ride. All right, all right. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, ready? Nice. Okay. Let's, let's. <laughs> you wrote LOL on the. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, this like, chorus yeah. is like. It's good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. DOD needs more love. I'm they angry really at do. the lack of love in the general pedal community. Okay. Here we go. You good? We ready to roll? Do you have a uh, overdrive preamp on your board? I sure do. I let's have it. let's yep. hear the bass through. People keep yeah. kind of imagining it can't possibly work on bass. All right. That's oh, see, that was the crook. Hold on. Oh, of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> I saved it. I saved it for the. You are uh, you. You realize that you are quickly becoming the <laughs> the ambassador of the crook. I do, and that's okay with me because it's, it's real it's good. good. It's a good pedal. <laughs> All right. Here's a. Uh, Here's the overdrive preamp on bass. Oh wait, here's my clean tone. Here's the overdrive preamp. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, it works on bass so weird. Huh, who would have thunk? So that's what the toggle uh, yeah, it has a high uh, it has a high pass. Yep. Yeah. Sure. It sounds good. You don't want to use it on like a country song. No. Oh, or maybe you do. Maybe you do. That's the toggle up. That's great. Uh oh. That's real good. Okay. There's, wow. Okay. It's like you're paid to sit and you're not actually. But I'm not. It's you're always a... allowed to say you hate something here. I don't hate that. All right. Y'all ready? Yep. Let's let's create a jam again. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> This is so 90s. Why is that so satisfying? What was going on there? It's just a DFX9 on a hold. 
Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. I approve of that. What key? <laughs> F sharp. <laughs> Thanks. I don't mess with you. Very fun. That was fun. Quantum Mystic, everybody. What? what I'm so. What's the? Di what is the the thing going on with that delay pedal? Do you have any what idea? What pedal? The 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 DFX. So that's it. this is from an era before loopers existed, okay. and so you have like the Boss digital delay sample holds. Okay. You have. Uh, what, we have a prime time, Lexicon, right? Sample yep. holds. Yep. Mm. Okay. So the idea is that you catch a moment of sound and you just sample it. So I think they call it infinite repeat. Okay. That, that should have been their marketing tagline. Catch a moment of sound. <laughs> Dang. It's beautiful. It's poetry, really. It was. Did yeah, it, do we have so a, it, it does oh, delay. Yeah. You know, like it... It's a bad delay, but a cool pedal. Right, right. <laughs> like this, like. Yeah. It's one of these pedals, like you're you're Brian Setzer, and you're yeah. very happy, and the rest of the world's like, I don't. Know. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <clears throat> very Do we cool. have a winner? Who's our winner? Yes, we oh. have a winner. It is Noah Berryman. <laughs> Email us at bjhsshow at jhspedals dot com. And if you're, you're not, not, if you're not <laughs> that guy. Don't email. Okay. Go, Noah. Just, you threw people off with that question. A lot of people were saying Harmon. Yeah. Because yep. yep. they didn't watch the episode. <laughs> or they don't listen. Or they don't pay attention. What if I watched the episode 900 you times <laughs> and I still guessed Harmon Brothers? It's It was the Henderson Brothers. That's, That's the right. answer. How many times did you watch that episode? So it's one hour long. I know. You gave yeah. your I life to it. Ten, yeah. ten times? Yeah. At least. I watched it one too many. <laughs> All so right. Many. Let's jump now. I, I think it's worth noting we kind of have three modern versions here. Okay. This, obviously, whatever, shameless plug on this one. But, like, these are not ours, so I, I, I really do like, I want to show these. I think they're three very significant, cool versions of the 250. Um, this is from Loophole Pedals. It's called the Gray Matter. I like to play on the name. The Gray Matter is, like, do you know what is it's like the part of your brain that's I, there's a thing there. Can I, someone look it up? What I is don't gray, know matter? What gray matter? Is. Or is gray matter like a physics? I, see I don't Marissa know. What working it is. Over there. Are you looking at yeah. it? Up? We we have a team oh, yeah. on this uh, here at the news desk. <laughs> if only we all had a way to do so, this. So this if you look down, it. this is two two fifties. So it's a 500. Ooh. Get it? Uh, Anybody? The wait, is it called the 500? <laughs> no, it's called the gray matter. Dang. The gray matter is the areas where the actual processing is done in the brain, whereas white matter provides the communication between different gray matter areas and between the gray matter and the rest of the body. The neurons in the gray matter consist of neuro neuronal, neuronal, nope. Neuronal. Did you just say <laughs> urinal? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's a stinger for this. Uh, cell bodies and their and their dendrites. <laughs> I'd love a good dendrite. What? So I still don't know really. Yeah, what it we is, don't but... know what it is, but now we know it's a term that it's a label for the landscape of the human mind. Oh. Mm, it's a beautiful way yeah. of putting it. If Dang. I say so myself. Mindscape. This does have a brain on it. <laughs> Yeah, that's oh, why I knew it was yeah, something cool. to do with the brain. Nice. <laughs> you didn't actually know. No, I mean I watched it's educational con programming it's and I've seen. Context clues. It's context clues. All right, so what we have is we have a green light, right? So you turn that on, the little green light. That's this row. This is a 250. And there's an edge control. I have no idea how he's doing this. I'm not super familiar with the pedal. It's super cool. 
I like how it sounds, but I don't know this circuit. So I think it sounds clever. I have no idea what he's doing, though. And then you have gain toggles. I'm assuming these are clipping. They feel like clipping. So there's three positions. This is probably silicon open LED or something. Again, assuming, but that's most likely what these are. And this is really cool because you can have this, this, or you turn them both on. And I think the first time we saw this in the market would have been the gray channel, the Earthquaker. This is off the market. So if you like this, this is probably where to go with that. I don't know why this is off the market either. Jamie's a huge fan of the 250. It's probably off the market because, I don't know, they have like a million pedals. It's, it's like the thing that we struggle with. with yeah. You can't make everything. So here's the green side. Let me see if I can find that same sound I always go to. <laughs> probably. Ooh, I like that a lot. Yeah, that that's, I'm assuming, and probably correct. That's no clipping diodes, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, it's like a preamp. I, neat. I feel like you would like. You haven't said that. I like that sound, and then it's no clipping dials. I, I don't know why. I just I'm like, that does sound like something you'd say. Really? Yeah. Oh. The okay. no diodes. The tones you go for that, like. Yeah. You know that just blasted amp sound. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I like that sound. Heck yeah, me too. Yeah, these I, I don't. Let's set them the same. Are they different? Are they it's not? It's like a very like pleasantly aggressive sound, but it's pleasantly mm. you know aggressive. I mean? In the comments, let Larissa know what you know about this pedal. That could be helpful to us oh, so yeah. that others can know. inform us. Yeah. But oh, we have a note. This is from this is from him. Uh he said soak to sending it in. Uh yeah, here's a great matter drive. He says uh, you guys have been a huge inspiration. That's very kind of you. Aww. Um, yeah, he's just saying thanks. That's nice. I love notes. I love paper lately. It feels yeah. so nice. Yeah, go go check out Loophole, and let's let's jam on this. This is really cool. So, should we should we pop another trivia question out into the in interwebs? We have one more pedal to give away. I think we just hold on. Hold off. Yeah, because it's, it's early. Oh, it's 3.45. We've barely scratched the surface. <laughs> yeah. We've got hours ahead of us. Yeah, let's... Here's off. I'm going to do the open... Ooh, nice. I'm going to call it the Chungus mode. Okay. Let's... Let's keep it chill, man. Let's yeah. let's go to Alt America Land or something in D. Cool. Is that cool okay. with y'all? In right. D. Sweet. I'll keep that in mind when I'm playing drums.
Yeah, that's super cool. Dirty part for the leads, whatever, however you want to stack it. I also had my uh, pickup selector on wrong this entire episode so far. Cool. That's fine. I nice. thought I had something that I didn't. And nice. I went and that, in the middle of the jam, I was like, this does not sound right. <laughs> you said that's not the vibe. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some weird stuff. Yeah. There's a pedal I want to demonstrate. I think Tom... Is Tom still on here? Tom's quite literally leaving as we speak. He's leaving? All right, you're out. That's Get out it. Here. All right. No, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a I, minute. I'm going to unmute him, Tom. We got yeah, a question for you. It's funny. He's like trying to escape, and I'm bringing him... Are you on here? You're live. You're live. I, I, I'm okay. here. Can you just, just talk about this? <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you well, want to know? Well, I mean, first of all, let's let's... This thing plugged into your iPhone one or something. It has <laughs> it, the it's pack it's called iStomp. That's embarrassing. Then there's like the cable in here is the old iPod cable. It looks like something Nick, what does this look like? It Just reminds me say of it. like a uh like a computer mouse. Mm. Yeah, so Tom, you're gonna have. I don't know enough about this. I stayed away from it. Just whatever, man. You're making me really uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> l l let's see. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this without getting in trouble. Um, I so I'll say this. I'll say I think it's super cool and it's a part of tech history that's fascinating. I just don't know what in the world to say about it. Yeah. So uh, I I think. Um, Part of the problem was it was an idea that was ahead of its time. Um, so, so it's 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 weird because there's what I what I mean when I say that is this was before Bluetooth. Well, that's not entirely true. Bluetooth was nascent at this time. It was just being born, okay. and so Bluetooth chips were outrageously expensive. And so uh, the the way around that was to do a wired connection. I honestly think that the, the I stomp would have been a much bigger success if it had, had come a year later when Bluetooth chips dropped down below the $10 mark. Because um, we see stuff like the was, H9 and it, we see all these paddles doing a Bluetooth thing. Yeah. yeah. What were you do yeah. You were at Digitech during this time, right? Yeah. So, so I, 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 I came on to Digitech just shortly after the I stomp was produced. And so it was my job at the time, because my, my official title was artist relations, but I started getting involved in product development and marketing at that time too. But um, so I had to, to you know, demonstrate and, and flog the I, I stop um, after it came out when nobody liked it. And, yeah. you know, but I, but I also, you know, I, I tried, um, I tried to make it work too, because some of the, the, the e-pedals were ones that I did for, yeah. you know, like, like the fuzzy and, um, the, the the half pipe and you know yep. uh, the red coral and the impossible pedal and stuff like that. So I was trying to to make it work. Yeah, was my job. Yeah. Um. But uh, so so the, it, on the one hand it was ahead of its time. On the other hand, it 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 fell prey to the problem of guitarists hate technology. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? And, I mean, Addison's playing a bass from oh the the sixties. Yeah, this guitar so, body. So, yeah, it's yeah like, that's another thing. Is is it was it was like a, a an answer to a question that no one asked, and a product that addressed um, things that guitar players hate. Yeah, it's it's a solution um, to a problem. That, I mean, it, it, yeah. it, it went in a direction the guitar players don't really want to go. Yeah, I I did a couple Patreon talks about this this rabbit hole I went down about tech, which is things aren't invented; they evolve. And then this other thought is. I think it's a very true thought is first is not best. I think a lot of times, and you feel this with pedals, like all this, just innovate, innovate, innovate. And it's like, that's exhausting, expensive, and you always lose. And so like, you look at somebody, like you look at this, what's crazy is like, yeah, it's strange and it's like awkward, but it's important because was this the first pedal to do this? I think and, so. And you know, to, to, give, to give props to the teams at that time too is, is, despite the fact that it was you know not based upon any desire from guitar players or, or really any market knowledge or yeah. data or anything like that they were trying to do something new exactly and so you kind of have to give them credit for that however that being said like you're saying you know there, there's well as as designers you're, you're like you have like a, a an angel and a devil on each shoulder yeah and you know one side is saying you know make something new 
Um, but then because of that, you then have to educate the market on, on you know, guitar players yeah, and what right. you're creating. Yes. And that is always, always harder and more expensive than anyone ever thinks it's going to yeah. be. You're, you're telling a guy, you got, yeah. you know, listen, listen to the, to the market. If you have the, if the market, if the guitar players are saying, we want this, we'll fricking make it. You know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You're talking to the guy who for years, everyone's like, Josh God doesn't have an original bone in his body. And then I do all these original designs and no one buys them. They tank so heavily, like crayon or twin 12, stuff like that. And then I do a not now. This is very difficult, as you know. The the bonsai and the muffled a nine tube screamers on a rotary railways. It's my best selling yep. pedal. It's a tube screamer. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's and it's, so it's pe- a weird thing. It's... People's arguments aren't. They don't even know what they're arguing. They're proving with their wallets that they don't want new. Absolutely. They want a Telecaster, and... a tube amp, and a freaking tube screamer. And, and honestly, there's there's so many books that have been written on this. There's there's you know, uh, you know, I, I was gonna say gallons of ink, but it's all on the internet, so it's it's yeah. you know, billions of bits wasted on people, you know, saying that they want new things. Yes, but you're absolutely right. The proof is in the pudding. It, it, it's yeah. you know, they, they they buy what they know, and they and there's and there's a reason, and, and that's not a bad thing either because. You know, there's a history of great guitar tones that guitar players want to achieve. And, you know, and that's in a quest in and of itself. Yeah. So, you know, to, to, to downplay that, I think, is also, you know, to a designer's detriment. Is, I agree. You know, I think it's important to embrace it. You dig something doesn't mean the guitar players are going to dig something. And guitar yeah. players dig certain things for a reason. And you have to respect it. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad you could chime in on it. You can you can leave now. I'll let you leave. Thank you. <laughs> I wish you'd ask me yeah. a cool question. No, so no, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it, this, this one is just like, I don't know. It, it, so basically for people watching, why am I holding this? Well, it has within it, you basically can flash from an app and make it different pedals. And so the 250 is in this. It's a strange version of the 250. He's he's grabbing something. Oh. I have to keep I have to keep oh. this thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's so amazing. that I can use the eye stomp, and I have to, you know, yeah. uh, keep this. I'm trying to get it in the frame. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're in know, it. You're in it. The special cable, you know, that if you lose, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. So I hang on to those so that I can fl- reflash my eye stomps. Yeah, wow. and they and it sounds really good. That's another thing to be noted. the The DSP tech at Digitech is was on fire. Like when I when I look at. Like we have an episode coming up on this hint hint, but this is an amazingly good pedal. This is a rocking pedal that gets pooped on or ignored. Yeah, so this is uh, you know as well. Just like this has a two fifty in it, so that's why I'm holding it up. Yeah. All right. Well, buy again, I guess. Yeah. Let's let's try (laughs) it again. All right. Have a have a great day. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Everybody, go check out Spiral Effects. All right. (laughs) Take care, man. So let's move down the line here. I just want to blast over. We have a, a Mosky. Can someone go to Amazon.com and type in Mosky 250X? This thing's like a dollar. Is I, it an Amazon Essentials? No, but it's. I got it on Amazon. Oh, okay. I I helped Jeff Bezos go to space <laughs> by buying this pedal. It's a 250. There's nothing. For all of twenty nine ninety nine, and if you have Prime free shipping, you can, you too can have one of these. <laughs> yeah, so I have this on here because if you, there's some of you watching, you watched Friday, you saw the exclusive thing sell out. <laughs> You're staring at the one seventy nine version. You're looking at this chaotic table. Every other jam we do, you're like, I hate the sound of that. And then we play something like, that's kind of cool, though. Just go buy this. And then decide and then go down the rabbit hole. Because the 250 is a... It's an, I think it's slightly acquired. There's something about yeah. it that's... Hmm. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. It's a slightly acquired, very crude. It's a very crude circuit. It's, it's almost just a microamp boost. It's almost a distortion plus. It's not. It's just like a strange, yeah. fun thing in the pedal world. Yeah. So, so yeah. Here's the sound of that. No need to jam. I don't have a twenty-nine dollar pedal. I'm not jamming on it. 
just because you can just try. It's a cup of coffee, right? Yeah. We've been through this. <clears throat> um, let's look at... So I have a switch back here, everyone. And we're going to insert some pedals over here, this pedal position. I'll try to separate it, but whatever's here is going to be on this red light. So right now... We have a pedal that I designed. I don't even know when this happened. And I forgot about it. There's a company called Jet City. And Jet City. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, you remember this probably. Yeah. They made amplifiers and things. Well, I designed an overdrive preamp for them based off the 250. This is the Proto. They were made in China. What year is this? This is the old remember. building for sure. That's the prototype. Um, but that's the pedal. Any of these you see online, they're just like ancient and I don't know how many they made. I made about $30 on this whole deal. <laughs> um, yeah. The you have the box. I do. I do have the box. I don't know where any of my cues are. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah. So it is a 250. I'll play it real quick. It's a 250 variant. <laughs> Oh, there's that sound. It feels very familiar. I literally yeah. tuned it to, and I high passed it where I like the high pass. Yeah, which is fairly significant yeah, and right. bright. So these are made in China. They were new, like forty dollars or something crazy. I made it where it cleans up more. That's cool. Got some clean volume. Nice. Yeah. And I think the thought here is this is such a simple circuit. There were guidelines on the design. I had to play to some rules for cost factors for a pedal being made in China, et cetera, et cetera. So the 250 was fun. I had never released anything in the JHS line like it. And I wanted something that you could leave on all the time, use an overdrive, or turn it all the way up and have that kind of tuned sound that I liked. And that kind of segues into the thought of. I mean, even when you look at something like a Klon, it's a hard clipper overdrive that its circuit topology can trace back to something like a 250. So there is this ability in like how even that pedal works that that was all in my head here with just, and this is nothing yeah. magical or that special. It's just a modded right, 250, right. but it's fun. So it's for collectors. Or people that, if you, I, I actually do see these. I'm always shocked. I'll see like a board on a Facebook group and it's like, he has some of those. Where did you buy that? Because I don't know where they went yeah. or how many there were. Um, what do you, what do we want to play here on the edges? We have a lot of edge stuff. Let me see. Um, is there, there's, a, there's some interesting stuff. Is there something you should pick? Is there a story behind that Voodoo Labs overdrive? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that one looks cool to me. So this this company, Voodoo Labs, has a tie back that's directly connected to Way Huge and George Tripp. So Ooh. Josh of Voodoo Lab, it's another Josh, he they're all good friends, and Josh wants to make a pedal based on the 250, borrows George Tripp's yellow. I saw this when I was in LA the other day, like actually held that pedal. It was fun. He borrows it, models the overdrive. Now, this is very important. This is not a sparkle drive. Mm. There's like That can be confusing if you're new to pedals. There's a Voodoo Lab sparkle drive, which is very famous. It is a tube screamer with a clean blend. Yeah, it is. This is a modded 250. Hmm. And if you simply look at these two schematics side by side, I feel it is very evident that Mike Fuller took, because this had been discontinued, Interesting. I think the OCD is from this. So there's this strange connector yeah. Yeah. where, like, back through here, like, George Trips is also here. He's, like, everywhere. Right, right. He's, like, the guy that touches everything. <laughs> yeah. And these are all Southern California okay. connections, and Mike Fuller's there, too. So, yeah, this is a 250. Hmm. It's interesting. Let's play it. Yeah. I'd love a lot of people it. never hear that. Let's yeah. plug it in right here. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's fun. If you have one of these in the comments, let us know. Larissa, are there any gray matter comments? Are they in? Uh, would loophole happen to be in the? Loophole was in the chat. Yeah. Okay. Um, some people are talking about the uh, the toggles and yeah. the the different lights. Um, 
Down is silicone diodes. Okay. And green is germanium. Okay. So cool. that's what we got. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very versatile pedal. So another really great option. This camera angle is so weird. I'm used to the depth. It's like the wall is <laughs> eating me. Oh, you got the funny, yeah, the yeah. funny adapter. Yeah. So let's turn this on. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is really wild. That is... Got some big old low end. I like it. It's like huge low end. Yeah. What? I almost wonder if this is modded. That is so wild. I don't know the last time I plugged this in. Oh. <laughs> it's broken. This explains everything. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> That's too bassy. We've got loophole again saying, um, oh, let me find it. Uh, down is silicone on both sides. Up on green is germanium. Up on blue is bat 41. Okay, cool. Yeah. So bat, yeah, that's very cool. I'm not going to play the no. Voodoo Lab Overdrive because something's obviously crazy with it. Let's play an HAO, HAO, H, H, A, you can do it. H. <laughs> H A O Soul Pressure. This is a really fantastic brand that's kind of a boutique. -y. It is not kind of. It's a very important boutique brand that was Japanese at the time. They've defunct. Um, so this is a 250 kind of take. The toggle is going to be a, t a tone toggle. So that's an interesting approach to the problem Tom talked about. Let's see. That's obviously the output. We're just showing how it's done here. Oh, this takes batteries. Uh oh. Lord Let's help us. One. We're striking out, man. We're striking out, and I'm okay with it. I can get a battery. No, we're there. not. We're not gonna. Look, I even have a little screwdriver. Let's move on to another pedal that may or may not work. I bought this. Let's just go straight here. No, let's do the Tim Overdriver. This is an amazing brand I collect, Australian-made uh, Tim Guitars. So this is his take on the 250. I'm going to plug it in. It's, it's going like to work. a blinding orange. <laughs> it's a very blinding orange. Here we go. This is going to work, y'all. Right? Yes. Addison's over here testing batteries. I'm changing a battery. <laughs> all right, all right. Here we go. This is going to work. There we go. Ooh, that's nice. It's got the high pass I like. None of the woof. There's your woof. That's great. That's so blinding the camera can't handle it. <laughs> Let's jam on this. Yeah. You're taking the battery off there, but... It's done. If we want to jam on it, we can. Let's do. We so, something crazy is going on over here, and we're just gonna ignore it. Y'all good with that? Yep. This is the Tim Overdriver, super fun brand to collect. Good luck collecting them; they will drive you mad. That's all we'll say there. Let me make up a riff.
Wonderful. I missed but, that ending there. Sorry. That's okay. <sighs> we're all tired. It's true. I'm I, tired, but we're here. I just got to say, the overdrive preamp on bass is pretty awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> I used it the whole time there. It's, that was a lovely sound. It's like you work for JHS. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying it's to. Hard. You know, why, it's hard. That's why. It's I'm why just, I hate talking about my own pedals because it's like let me greasy talk about car them. salesman thing, right, and I yeah. just hate it. I'd just rather not. Right. Y'all talk about them. Am I greasy? No, not at all. <laughs> You're not greasy. You're the least greasy person ever. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's uh, let's do that HAO. Yeah. Hopefully it works now. I don't know that I've ever played this thing. I oh, I nice. collected the whole series like blindly. Yeah. 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 And then I don't have a problem just buying pedals and not playing them and putting them on the wall. They sure look cool all together. They do on look the wall. cool. Yeah, we need to to become good friends with the designer of these. He's a wonderful guy. Actually worked for Gaia Tone Tokyo hmm. Sound. Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> We're striking out. We tried. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Return. Oh, we're in two. Go to two. Return two. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on from that. Uh, <laughs> we tried. Everything is fine. What do we, we play next? Ooh, what's this? I don't know. Oh, okay. It says... <laughs> it does say DOD to show the back. The back. <laughs> <laughs> it's some kind of homemade... Sharpie. Someone <laughs> sent in a homemade 250? I don't know. Oh, man. Let's play... Here's a weird one. Let's take the back off this. That's two right. screws. I found this the other day on Reverb. Okay, so I, I'm scrolling through Reverb, and there's a 250... I, because we were doing this episode, I had extreme yeah. alerts on right, 250s. Right, so like right. I'm watching everything, buying stuff like the moment it pops right, up. Right. And I see this. Let's I see this gut shot. This is the stupidest crazy thing I've ever seen. <laughs> see those two Whoa. big silver boys in there? Yeah. Those are oh they're OC seventy seven like tone bender transistors that cost like now they cost like 70 bucks a piece for a Whoa, good pair. Yo. So what's happening here is they're probably leaky and unusable. So they clip a leg off and use them as clipping diodes. And then what? the op amps change. All the caps are changed. And then I see the name that gives it away on the back plate. Yep. <laughs> it says proanalog.com. It's Scotty Smith, who like he's one of the boutique fathers sort of. He basically just mutilated this thing, <laughs> and I have yet to hear it. So this is like this is a debut of what in the world? Please work. Do OC seventy seven? Are they seventy? Yeah, OC seventy seven transistors, an LF thirty three fifty six in op amp sound like. Let's do the power cable. Put that on there. We're just showing how it's done today. This right. is a chill, chill vibes. People are here for it, I'm um, assuming. While we're doing this, let's take some, let's gather some DOD questions, some DOD 250 questions. <laughs> Laura's is just smiling over there. It just must be chaos in the. Okay, here we go. So, okay, it's already weird. I heard like one single <laughs> flutter of a note. <laughs> That's so weird. That sounds it's, good, it, though. It, just, it sounds really good. Yeah. I mean, Scotty has a killer ear for dirt. Yeah. Style, like. Ooh, that's sick. I like that. So. The top end is very different. So that's max sound of whatever these. You can use transistors as diodes. Okay. If they're So when you have, like, these germaniums and they're. You can't use them in fuzzes. They won't work, but you can use them as diodes. It's a clever trick to do something cool with a part you can yeah. have to throw away. It's like making some dish out of like the waste of another meal. Right, right, right. Is that? It's like taking the like uh, the the, guts. the juices of like some it's like steak and making a grilled cheese or something. Hey man, I That's got a... some steak juice. I'm gonna rub it on a grilled cheese. Yeah, yeah. Steak, All right. grilled cheese. <laughs> Let's do a delay sound here. Oh, I was hoping you'd go dotted but, eight vibe. I will. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
So let's go to A. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> What's so funny? Yeah, man. I don't know. It just, it's just funny. It's like, it's like. Sometimes music makes you laugh. Hold on. Explain what is funny about this riff. <laughs> I don't know. What do you see in your I head? I just see like coming 2023 Chevy's new automatic truck. <laughs> so this is some insight into how we name yeah. jams. So people ask, tell how you name jams. Like I don't know. It's just like I take two things that seem <laughs> ridiculous and I just slam them together. And you don't think much about There's it. There's a part in my brain, basically like my eyes roll back into my head, <laughs> and I just become a name generator. And it's exhausting. <laughs> so what would you name this? I'll call it like Cactus Fried. Cactus Fried. Here we go. I don't think I did that the same one time. What do you <laughs> <laughs> play? What you were playing? I mean, it was. And then. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. I don't know either. That was amazing. That was whatever he called it. Cactus. Cactus something. Friday. Cactus Friday. Let's Come talk on, about Cactus Friday. Let's talk about this thing, FX52. It is not a 250, but inside of it is a 250. It's a weird fuzz, um, and it has this control label called Boost. You can't see it, but it's there. So when you get into boost land, you're kind of shoving this 250 circuit, making it come to life. So you have a tone control of volume. It's just worth playing for like a second here. Like, first of all, that's not fuzz. That's the first weird problem with this pedal. Listen. It's on. It's like halfway on. Yeah. I'm <laughs> like, did we lose a cable? Oh, oh we are. We did. There we go. So that's a tone control. That's cool. Let's just give it all it's got. Full tone, full fuzz. This is definitely, I mean, era appropriate. This is like a grunge fuzz. This is not, yeah. this is not your like, who's your character, the wealthy blues connoisseur kid. It's what? not, oh, yeah, it's oh. not his kind of fuzz. Br oh, I can't. Trax Traxton? Traxton St. Clair? Yeah. Not that that was you. No. That's a real person who exists in real life, in reality. This is very much like a... It's it's like that kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. Add octave. cool 
That is cool. Let's give one away. Yeah. This one's a slightly different color. I struggle with giving it away. Oh, dang. It's painted. It's just a different hue. Do you see it? I do yeah, see, I see it. it. Do you feel like, should I give it away still? You've committed. <laughs> I have. All or right. or you give away your clone. Let's give this away. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question at hand for the FX52 is, what is the second production fuzz in world history? The second fuzz produced for manufacturing in the history of the world. What is the name of that fuzz? Oh, it's a, not a DOD question. <laughs> no, it's not. This is a fuzz. Okay. Yeah, well, I know, I know. Yeah, so what is that second? Do I need to write this down? I, Addison has <laughs> the phone. Hold on. This, Hold this, on. I know what it is. I think I know what it, know is, what it is, but is. You, you should... I you, think I know. You all doubt yourselves, but yeah. you hear me blabber about this stuff That's constantly. I also yeah, need yeah, to yeah, say yeah, 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 yeah. about that, the FX52 fuzz, people are saying it sounds like um, a Lowe's commercial. Or like oh, a Home yeah, Depot yeah, commercial. yeah. That's exactly this? right. Yep. Especially that last jam. Yeah, yeah. that last jam was totally. definitely a Lowe's commercial. It makes sense. Build your dreams. Build your dreams. This summer. Home Depot. Make a house a home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the second ever production fuzz in the history of the world. Do awesome. we have some general 250 chatter? Any questions that we could, we yes. could go to? Let's, yes. Let's use the stinger we have. It's time we never get to use it. Your questions. All right. <laughs> People want to know, is there a magic chip? I answered no. I answered this. Okay. No. There's there were still not. questions. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> not a magic chip. Uh the best evidence of this, it applies in the same way that it applies to the rat. So go to Google search and type in JHS history of the rat and you'll see an article and I show the chip situation. I also want to say that's a good thing I forgot. I am going to do the same kind of essay for the DOD 250 that I did yeah. for the rat. So if you like that kind of stuff, there will be some pictures. There's not as much info as Proco gave us. But, yeah, we'll do the similar thing. Great question. Um, another one. Is there a famous song using the 250? That's a good question. This is that's shockingly difficult. I really, really? – I yeah – I had a hard time nailing that down. Really? I can't find one. Interesting. That we're aware of. Yeah, yeah. It seems like the 250 was so popular at its time yeah. that like, it has to be all over stuff. Ingve Malmsteen <laughs> is what... Yeah. Any, that's the only references like, that so was funny. his go-to. But they sold a lot of these. Yeah. So it's all over music, and it's like... Also, the era is strange. Mm. I'm assuming it's like on a lot of music I don't listen to and that I'm having a hard time pinning down like there's probably like a stick song or something right. or yeah. like something it's like I it feels like a bit of a black hole. Yeah. So if you know one in the comments that would be really that fun to really know. I really searched after this enough that mm -hmm. I was like shocked. I could not it, nail it down. That is really wild and unique about the 250 cuz I think for most like uh like legacy yeah. effects like big muff mm -hmm. fuzz face like you it's oh. so easy Super you know easy. to find stuff that's yeah. really interesting mm. it it is i mean even the distortion plus you can name a few things and then like there's even for something like the zoom box i mean this is early u2 like there's something to that oh. yeah right oh. but the 250 is like nothing it's really interesting beck and i have seen copeland uh uh, yeah, I love many Copeland. times. Mm -hmm. And Aaron Marsh, the frontman, okay. always has a 250 on his board. So I would imagine that's that cool. some of their studio tones are also that. Probably that not all sense. of them. But no, that makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. really so cool to know. For the Copeland fans or the not Copeland love, fans, go check it out. I love Copeland. Me too. Uh, yeah. Any more questions? Yeah, there's a couple. Um, a couple more. There is um, why the name 250. There was no answer to that. I asked David specifically about the numbering system, 440, et cetera, 250. Uh, John Johnson passively was like, I think it's a, the number of parts in the pedal. And I was like, nope, in my head. <laughs> right. And then David just said, I don't know, it was just 
just how we like there yeah. was no rhyme or reason and there so isn't i mean i it feels a bit like cracking some secret code right. like like a translated language like may, and i looked at the parts thing i thought it through there's no connection with any of these dod yeah. files in the number yeah interesting mm -hmm. that's a great question Weird. um also people want to know what your favorite one yeah. is i have two favorites as seen in the friday episode my favorite favorite is the FX50. I showed it in the episode. It's from the FX series. And then my second favorite is Tom Cram, who was on earlier. He did some updates. Um, it's kind of a sparkle yellow. That was the last era of actual DoD. Those are my two favorite units. But the F FX50, I really like. I like how it looks. Yeah. That's yeah. great. A good looking pill. Good questions. Uh, the is there like a I have a like a ache in my back and you, it you okay bro? and it feels a little bit like Ernie Ball trivia time. Ernie Ball trivia time. Welcome to Ernie Ball Trivia Time, where we ask a question and Ernie Ball gives away an entire box of strings if you get the question right and you're the first person in the comments. Here's the question. <laughs> question is who did Ernie of Ernie Ball write jingles for at one point many, many, many years oh. ago? It's in an episode. It is in an episode. About. Who did Ernie Ball write jingles for at one point in his life? Wonderful question. I like, I like these questions that sort of pertain to our episodes because we get to see like who's actually been doing their homework. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, who's like, been paying attention? Yeah, it's like asking your kid if you clean if they clean their room, but right. then you have to go up. And and then like you got to go check. You got to go check something right, out. Right, right, and you're right. like, yeah, oh, no, I did. Okay. Yeah, you didn't clean your room. Yeah. You're dead to me. I I've think, never said that to my kid. I think something I'm noticing about the DoD 250 legacy is it's like kind of the perfect essay on like the pedal industry as a whole because it's it's so fa like what we're looking at here is such a perfect example of certain effects being these foundational elements that I mean even the the 250 in and of itself is is uh is kind of like in the lineage of the distortion yeah. plus and it's like now i don't know it, it kind of touches on that subject of like cl what's a clone what's a variant all these ideas and it's just so i th I think if it isn't apparent already just from watching the show and talking about this everything comes from something and it's yeah. really and even the 250 in and of itself being different between models is hilarious because you know what i mean like it's just kind of it's proving this idea that like it's like what Tom said earlier, like everybody kind of wants the same things and the, but the creative part is a, someone like you, Josh, making a version that has the, the high pass or whatever that you want it. And it's like, this is just like my sound. You just have to make, I think a maker on something like this, just make what we want and people yeah. will like it or not. And right, right. We can't try to recreate. Like the two, you just make a two streamer you like and move on. Right. Let right. people enjoy what you enjoy about it. You're not. Yeah. I see so many comments that are like, just making another tube screamer, those sissies, or like the yeah, other right. two. I saw stuff on this, like, yeah, last thing we need is another 250. And it's like, well, don't, you don't have to buy it. Like, right, right. We're just letting people enjoy this thing with us. And yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is what it is. They're, it's what you're saying is very true. Yeah. Uh, this is the Drive O Matic by Stamps. I think we jam on this and then we uh, give away the strings. Love it. I do have the box for this. This is a very rare item. Rhett Scholl found one with the box. Has the manual. It's kind of amazing. This is a cool pedal that's shrouded in some mystery. I'm going to hunt down the story, but Bonnie Raitt uses this like on her oh, slide cool. tone. It has a dual like channel one, channel two Ooh. stamps. Is an, was an amplifier maker. I believe this guy was Californian or Oregon in him. Oregon in him. That's how you say it. You got it. Yeah. So let's go to the switch there. <laughs> dog it's chunky let's go so that's neat yeah
Yeah, it's fun. Why don't you guys start a jam and I'll join in? Okay. What key? Addison, what key? Uh, e. Sure, E is great. Oh, you start it. Okay. Here we go. It's always a fun pedal to pull out. It's like it's a very cool. It's like a dark and moody, hard clipping thing that is somewhere in the land of the two fifty. In the land of the, the two fifty. The yes. Let's give away the strings. Okay, so our winner for the strings was Joshua times se- seven. Nice. Email us what kind of strings you want and your shipping address. To the JHS show at jhspedals.com. And, and if, if you're, you're not, not Joshua seven times seven times seven, don't email. Also, we have a winner for that other oh, yeah, pedal. Let's do that. Away. Yep. So the answer was tone bender. Great yes. job, everyone who got it. Um, Andrew M. Good All job, right, Andrew. Us. And if you're not Andrew, Andrew M., M, don't email us. What was the what was the Ernie Ball trivia time answer? It was uh, KTLA. Nice. In LA. All right, Andrew. We're going to mail this to you. KTLA. There you go. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to hold on to it. it. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, I just noticed something. What's that? There's two L's on the love driver. Kind of a little stacky stack. Mm -hmm. Just staring at it over here. Like L L O V E? Yeah. So love. They're like stacked. I don't know. You can't see it. I think we jam on one more pedal and call it a day. I think that's a good idea. The the choice is hard here. There's some cool stuff left. There's the Gray Channel Earthquaker. You have the Pelican uh, 60 cycle hum thing where they did the two 250s called a 50 50. This is fun. Smart. You know, it's similar to that layout. Nice. We have the Ingve Fender post <laughs> fight pedal. The drive by Daredevil's a little more distortion plus, but it's fun. We have this very limited Japanese way huge thing. I don't know. You know. I feel like we've done a good job here. And we I just, have done a good job. What do I play? I don't know. What Should do Larissa do? pick what we play? Yeah. What do we What do we play? One final pedal. You said you didn't want to play the uh, the Earthquaker one. I didn't say that. Let's no. play the Earthquaker one. Yeah. Let's do That's it. The one. Cool. Here we go. Great channel. Jamie's a huge fan of the two fifty. Um, and this is his kind of stacked deal so the two sides so this toggle silicon none germanium led none fet which is cool so each side has kind of a different vibe you turn it on and off and then you activate the according side so let's 
Let's see. Oh, that's activate. That's the channel. Yes. Yay. So that's FET clipping. LED. Oh, I like that. That's the big, yeah, big open. And then here's toggle over to the green side. Germanium. Silicon's going to be more what a 250 sounds like. Yeah. I like the LED clipping a lot. I do too. I like the FET a lot. Can you play the LED clipping one more time? Yeah. Let me keep it from blowing our head off. Yeah. That's a cool sound. It sounds like a cranked amp. Back yeah. to what Addison said about it. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. I think I like how it's like very articulate. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's jam. That is wildly different. That's like at least four totally different sounds. Yeah, pedals. super unique. Yeah, I was trying to switch to them and job, play that, that riff that was hard to get back to. Yeah, that was Yeah, cool. it's very mm -hmm. cool. I love it. My understanding is it is discontinued. Hmm. But we don't know okay. why. Yeah, okay. sometimes it just discontinues yeah, stuff. That's okay. All right. That's it for today. This was fun. We did it. We gave away three pedals. We gave away some strings. Um, yeah, check out the Friday episode. Um, go check out this pedal if you're interested in what we now offer. It's the Overdrive preamp. It is based upon um, this original 75th DoD pedal ever made, and it's improved for the modern world, you could say. That's it. This has been really fun. Any closing comments? Nah, man. We're good. That's it. Everybody have a good Wednesday and see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.